。北加州湾区的朋友们，大家好，我是伊藤，我是 Felicia。非常感谢神的预备和湾区的朋友的邀请，在十一月十一号十一点钟，我们会在 Freeman 与大家见面。在这一次的见面当中呢，我们会有一些信息与大家一起来分享，之后也会有 Q&A 的时间，欢迎在湾区的朋友一起前来。尤其非常多我们的观众朋友，大家都住在湾区，非常感谢大家对我们长久以来的支持。经常呢都是透过网络看到我们，但是我们也同样期待在现实中见到你们。当天我们也为大家预备了精美的茶点，欢迎大家扫码报名，方便我们统计人数。AI News 和你十一月十一号不见不散。Hi everyone, my name is Ethan. Welcome back to AI News. Today is something special. We are interviewing a very special guest. I say that to every guest we have, but today is really special because I love this guy. He wrote a book, and he's only 18 years old. I never wrote a book myself, so that's special already. What can an 18-year-old person say to the public, and why is he writing a book about? His life and his journey. Today we're gonna welcome Oscar. What's your last name? Ornelas. Ornelas. Yeah. Okay. I almost brutalized that name. <laughs> yeah. So, Oscar, I I read your book. What make you want to write this book? And tell us a little bit about this book. Yeah. So, I'm a tennis player, but a very good tennis player. <laughs> about. Seven weeks ago, actually, fifty days ago, about fifty days ago, I got hurt playing basketball, which was kind of dumb. But wrong sport. <laughs> I I hurt my ankle, so from there, I basically just stopped playing tennis because I stopped everything physically. So knowing me, if you ask any of my friends, my family, I cannot. I'm the type of person that has to keep on working, has to keep on working, doing something. I cannot stay still at home,、mm. so basically, I was researching. I was basically、um, just looking, just finding random things on the internet, just simply do at home. I even picked up piano. I was learning how to play the piano, and then the book idea came along. It's always been a bucket list item for me in in my life, but I just didn't know when that was gonna happen. I knew I wanted to write a book, but I didn't know. Exactly what time was it? When I'm fifty, when I'm thirty, when I'm when I have a family, or I never knew I could write that book at age eighteen. I've always wanted to write a book. It's always been in the back of my mind. It's just when was I gonna write that book? So you break your leg <laughs> as a tennis player, and then you decided to pick up piano. Yeah, and write a book. Yeah, and、uh, yeah. Wow.、Well, well, who? Please leave a comment on the bottom. What would you do if you break your leg? I read it, and I think this is needed for every man. Yeah. Not just in this country, but the whole world. Because right now, we're missing masculinity, and a lot of young people are missing purpose. I think the second chapter you talk about purpose. Why do you think? We are at this stage. Young people live without a purpose because I just watched a video. A girl was crying on the internet and just go like,、oh, "I work nine to five. I don't have a purpose. I can't do. I can't go to the gym. They don't want to work. They don't want to do anything with their life. What make you think different about the word purpose? And what do you think purpose is? Yeah, I mean, if you just think about it, like, if you don't have purpose in anything you do. There's no point even in even doing it.、Mm -hmm. If people don't have the purpose to wake up, if, if people don't have the purpose to simply be a better person than yesterday, or 
provide for their family or whatever, like fill in the blank. If you don't have a purpose in working out and eating good, whatever, there's no point in basically living life. And that's what our generation is basically, as we see, that's how they're living their life with no purpose. And for me, I'm a strong believer in, in God. So with God, he has given me a purpose and I know my purpose to live on this earth. And I mean, I said it in the book, but without purpose, it's just like, you're just going through the motions. Mm -hmm. Like there's no, I guess, want in your life. There's no, I guess, significance in your life. It's like working in a Chinese factory, <laughs> making iPhones. That's why they jump off the building. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, so to answer your question, I believe our young generation is so, especially with the school system, especially with the news, the, the, the trends, the culture, they're so brainwashed and distracted with things that I guess feel nice, sound nice, but in the long run, like it's Ful not gonna- Fulfill. Yeah, fulfill basically. So I believe that if you have a strong foundation mm -hmm. in God, then everything beyond that is, I guess I would say easy in a way or simple. Yeah. yeah. Right now, at our generation, uh, his generation, basically, we're from very different generation. I'm like 22 years older than you. <laughs> Young people these days, they think that their purpose is to be themselves okay. and to fulfill themselves, make themselves happy. I can be a different gender. I need to color my hair blue. I need to do this. I need to do that. But usually, they are not happy. They are very, very unhappy people and they think yeah. that the whole world yeah. owes them something. So I would say that is the wrong purpose in life. But do you agree? Why do you agree or disagree? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I would say I disagree. I actually write in the book, if you read it, in the, the last chapter, which is chapter nine, the difference between success and significance. Mm -hmm. So in this world, people are just looking for success in themselves which is fine. Like, like I encourage you, I want to see all the success that you have in this world, but it's how you use that success. So in this world, people, they can do whatever they want. They can gain the whole world, but they can lose their own soul. I would say it's not worth it in a way. So do you want success for yourself or would you rather have significance in others? Because God calls us to love on him and to love on people. It's not about us mm -hmm. because we're just here for a temporary time. We are to love on people, share his word, and make an impact, not for ourselves, but for other people. In your book, you talk about love. The society is kind of different from your take on the word love. They will say that love is like accepting, don't hurt other people's feeling. And then on your book, specifically say that if the world don't care about your feeling, why should you care? What make you write that line? Um. <laughs> Well, so the context of it, I was putting it in like a, in a negative point of view. So mm -hmm. like if the world is hating on you, if someone thinks about, has an opinion about you and that puts you down mm -hmm. in that context, I believe it's not about your feeling. I tell my friends all this time when they're like, oh, I don't want to do this. Oh, I can't do this. Oh, I'm tired. I don't care. Like I'm yeah. your friend. I, I love on you, but think about it. Is true love telling you lies about, oh, you're fine, Let's just take a rest. Or is true love saying, hey, get back up, get back to work, and then you can rest after. So that's the context I was trying to get out of it. And think about it, like I wrote it in the book too, like the world is not gonna wait for you. The world is not gonna say, oh, let's wait for Oscar and pick him up and then hold him by his hand. No, the world is going and it's going fast. So we either have a choice to wait and let the world go and dare us to get back up or we have the choice to either battle against the world and conquer the world, which is basically, I'm just saying like the devil in a sense, or conquer our feelings or people's opinions against us. Mm -hmm. So that's what I kind of meant in that context. Now, throughout your journey on growing up, when did you start to say like, hey, my, not even my feeling matters. I need to honor God, honor my religion, my faith more than I honor my friend and honor myself. Yeah. When did it start? Because it started for me after I read the Bible, which is like when I'm 30 years old. 
before yeah. that, I yeah. think like I am the king of the world, and obviously you learned that from a very young age. When did it start, and how did it start? Um, I mean, I've always been. If you ask any of my friends, I've always been the quiet kid or like the shy kid because I would always be thinking.、Mm-hmm. I believe our generation, especially the younger generation, they do not think before they do.、Mm. So I've been always a thinker and an overthinker. I wasn't born like this. Obviously, it's a process. Every day, I try to be a better person. But I believe maybe like just a couple years ago, just like maybe last year,、mm-hmm. like it really clicked for me. Like the sense of discipline and the sense of purpose and how I see the world today. Like it finally clicked for me from what. God has been speaking to me from what my mom, my dad has been speaking to me, and as I'm speaking, the difference in what I was and how, what I am today,、mm. and it's crazy to see how I used to act or how I used to do things in this world from the littlest things to now. Like it's just, it's just, I can't fathom it. It's、mm. just crazy, and it's just a simple choice, a simple choice that someone has to make,、mm-hmm. and a lot of people have that idea, or they don't. But they have the idea, and they simply don't choose because、mm-hmm. it's simply, oh, it doesn't feel nice. It's uncomfortable. It's hard. Okay, yeah, that choice is hard, but all the benefits leading after that is worth it. That's why I believe. In your book, you talk about make your bed. Yeah, I I have to admit, I never really made my bed. And you give an example. If you focus on the small things, and then once you, you do it once, twice, and every day, it becomes a habit. And then it becomes part of you and your personality. Where did you get that, and、uh, why do you think that is important? For example, I'm a very rebellious kid. There are a lot of people like me. What's your <laughs> message to them or、yeah, so, like me? Yeah. <clears throat> so,、um, the purpose of making your bed. So I'll explain that. So basically, for me, I guess any other kid,、mm-hmm. I kind of still think, oh, th- there's no point in making your bed. Yes. As the physical aspect, because you get out of bed, let's say you go to school, whatever, and then at night you go back in that same bed. So it's just gonna, it's like you make you clean it just to mess it up again. Like it doesn't、yeah. make sense. But there's something beyond the purpose of just that,、mm-hmm. which is basically focusing on the little things, as you said.、Mm-hmm. Because if you can't do the little things right in life, how will you be able to master the big things? You might be able to partially, but you're never fully. Complete, I guess. I like to think about it like if you want to start a company, you have this big idea, but if you can't even wake up, if you can't even hire the right people, if you can't even do the smallest things in that company, then there's no even there's not even a point in the big picture. If that makes sense, it's not just making your bed. It can be like eating right, having the discipline to eat whether this or that, or how to treat others, or Holding the door for a lady, like the smallest things in life, will go a long way. That's what I'm trying to put out. Yeah, our world today, a lot of it, it's missing. When I, while I was reading this book, what I saw was you split it into ten chapter, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so, Basically, but、yeah. the first one is like introduction.、Yeah. The the last one is conclusion. What I found when I'm reading each chapter is the fruit of the spirit. Do you feel feel、yeah. like that when you're writing it?、Yeah. It's like love, joy, peace,、yeah. patient, kind of good goodness,、yeah. and it's like、uh, yeah, you can relate a lot from what I wrote to the Bible, basically.、So、yeah, yeah, that's what I yeah. How did you came up with this idea? Because right now this kind of teaching is everywhere on the internet, but it's from the wrong people, and a lot of young men want to follow those people because those people have flashy cars. Expensive jewelry,、yeah. and their goal is to sleep with a lot of women all the time,、yeah. every day. What makes this book different than those online teaching, online、yeah. guru? Yeah, totally. That's a hard question, but I believe the people in our generation, when they let's say put out information like this, they just go hundred percent.、Mm-hmm. They just put all all discipline on this. They don't care about anything else.、Mm. In a sense, where when I wrote the book, there's a very fine line in between each point.、Mm-hmm. Because if you read the book, if I make a point, it can be good, but then there's a very fine line, and between that fine line is black and white. So it can be good or it can also be bad.、Mm. 
because in this world, it's not always good. And all those influencers or whatever they write, they're only saying the good. That's、right. what I I think. So it's kind of I guess like a lie to the kids because it's not true.、Mm-hmm. So when I wrote the book, I had to be very very careful when I wrote each argument, each point, because there's always both sides to the point, and I I try to explain it as best as I can, but that's just reality. That's just life. So that's what I think and believe that our influencers and our the popular people in our day. When they're writing books and making points, it's mostly just the good, so the kids can like them. They can get more followers, more likes, and they can eventually they will be brainwashed. Yeah, and I think that online influencer, what they do is they're disciplined in one aspect, like build up their body, be a better fighter, and then、uh, make a lot of money, be disciplined on that. But in their personal life. They just go. Oh, we can pimp women, and then、uh, we, I can pimp five or six women at the same time, so、yeah. that they make money for me, and then I can provide protection for them and stuff like that. And I think that is just wrong for a man to think like that. Why do you think that God is so important for you? Because when I read your book, the main difference I see that is that you are humble. Under God, they're they're just not humble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, as I said, I mean, going back to purpose, going back to God, foundation, but going back to success and significance, I strongly believe in this book specifically. Purpose and success and significance; those chapters are the most important、mm. because relating to, back to the world. Many, as you said, guys or people just want to have fun, basically. Yeah. So. And they want all the success for themselves. Yes. So when they have that goal, when they have that purpose for themselves, they don't care what other people think. They don't care what their families are trying to say to them, their, their, their friends, or whatever. As I said, like I want the best for you. I want the most success you can have in your life. But if you look at success from comparing to others,、mm-hmm. you will never fulfill that dream, that goal,、mm-hmm. because there's always going to be someone b- better than you. If you look at success from where you started, then that's success,、mm-hmm. and how you use that success to impact this world. So,、mm-hmm. as I said, like there's a very fine line in every point.、Mm-hmm. Uh, in this book, you talk about limit. Yeah, yeah. We, we just talk about <laughs> in the beginning. Yeah, you're saying that you shouldn't limit yourself. Why is that? You sh- shouldn't set a limit to yourself. Okay. To your success. Yeah. Can I ask you why? Why can't you set a limit?、Uh, because, from my opinion, our limit define who we are.、Okay. Yeah. See, my limit is biblical guideline. We ca- I cannot cross that line. And then every society have different limit. So basically, like Muslim world, they have different limit, and the world worldly people, those Andrew Tate,、yeah. they have a limit too. It's just that. Our limit define ourselves, our、uh, workspace basically.、Yeah. And when when you say don't limit yourself, that's a lot of what、uh, the leftists say.、Oh, you, you you can fly, you can be an elephant, yeah, yeah. you can be a, a dude if you're、yeah. a girl and stuff like that. So we need some sort of limit. Yeah. But what is it? What you're talking about in the book is don't set a, a goal limit.、Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Like、yeah. limit, how to define limit, <clears throat> and、uh, what can we do with limit? You're totally correct. It really depends on the context. Yeah, because like there's a difference between limit and there's a difference between standards or I guess laws to follow. Yes. If there's a law, then yes, th- that's the limit. You can't cross that line,、mm. or else you're disobeying God, you're disobeying your parents, you're disobeying whoever. So. <laughs> Again, a fine line. You gotta be careful when you talk about these things, especially against like laws and limits. But in this case, in this context, I write limits specifically for yourself when you're working, when you're working out, when you're doing something small or whatever. I kind of like cringe or I hate it when people set a limit for themselves because they don't know how much they can actually do.、Mm. And some people like me. I know how much they can do, and I try to encourage them. I try to push them, but they have that limit and they're stuck.、Mm-hmm. So, 
like from the smallest things to like writing a piece of paper, the length of that paper. You can, why do you only cut it off at five sentences? Why can't you just keep on writing until you have all your thoughts on the paper? From doing, as you said, as working out, why do you only set the limit that you have on yourself? Mm -hmm. So all of these questions are simply important to ask yourself. And this is how you grow. You don't need anybody to push you. Mm -hmm. If you can push yourself just by asking these purposeful questions, then that's like the best way to grow. Mm. So that's what I think. You cannot set a limit on yourself. Yeah. And you talk about something very important. Push yourself. Because right now, uh, in our society, we don't really have, like, like what you said in the book, we don't really have someone that's pushing us, someone's holding our hand, and someone that's there to guide us in life. The truth is, the people who claim to guide us, they, they often do it the wrong way. That's how we got gender dysphoria and stuff like that. But what makes you set a guideline for yourself, and how do you push yourself every day to follow that guideline? <clears throat> who made up that guideline? Kind of repetitive, but... Without God, nothing would be good. But for me, what I strongly believe in is discipline like over motivation. Mm -hmm. Because motivation is just a feeling. It comes and goes. Tomorrow I might be motivated. The next day I might not be. Oh, I want to work out at 5 a.m. tomorrow. And then I'm sore. I'm feeling down. I have a bad day. And then the next week I basically, I slack. I procrastinate. I stop. So when it comes You're to talking about me, <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to feeling, it's very temporary. It is temporary. Feeling is, is very temporary, even in relationships. That's why it's so important to keep that, I guess, relationship or love mm. with discipline. It's, it's permanent. If you have discipline, which takes time to grow and practice, then it's infinitely more important. That's what I believe in this generation, in this world, everyone's looking for outer sources or they motivate themselves. But, and don't get me wrong, motivation is good. That can drive your discipline. But if you don't have a strong foundation in discipline, then there's no point in even going to work out if you work out once a week. Mm. So relating to the world, that's, that's what I believe. Wow. Yeah, well, I recommend everyone to get this book, especially if you're men. Young men, old men, you need to read this book. It's a life-changing book and make you think very differently from a very different perspective. And I think that this dude has a lot of wisdom inside this book and how men should live our life, basically. And if you want to have strong marriage, if you want to have a strong standard of living, you, if you want to set a good limit, read the Bible and apply this book to read the Bible. Because as Christian, our biggest limit or lack of discipline is reading the Bible. How often do you read the Bible? I'll be honest, that's, that's hard for me. Okay. But, but recently, I've been reading more. Every morning, I would read. But mm. it, it is, I'll be honest, it is hard for me to pick up the Bible, just find time to just focus and, and simply see what God's been telling me. Yeah. It is hard, but it's not impossible, so... My, I need to discipline to uh, play tennis even when, with a broken leg. Uh, what do you think that you want people to get from this book? I mean, there's a lot, but as I said, purpose, significance. But what I want to say is in this world, it's going to be hard. It's going to be tough. Like the world's not going to wait for you. As I said, people are going to try to purposefully tear you down. The devil's going to want you to think you're a failure. You're going to have trials. You're going to have problems. You're going to have boundaries in, this, in your life. But you cannot let those trials define who you are. You determine what that trial can affect you in the future. And I feel like that's the most important part because in this world, people, they're too, I would say, I guess weak in a sense, where they let the problem simply determine who they live or they let someone determine who they live. No, we, we can't be determined and live from someone's thought that they have on us. No, we have to keep moving. If we have a, a strong purpose, nothing will get in our way. So I would say just be strong. Obviously, without God, like nothing can happen. You can't have breath in your lungs. You can't wake up. You can't walk, anything. So don't let the world determine who you live, but you determine how the world should act. 
Oh, thank you, thank you, Oscar, for coming to the show. Again, this is a very good book. It's very well written, and he put a, a lot of thought in there. Where can they get, buy this book? You can buy it on Amazon. It's、um, the paperback or on Kindle ebook. Yeah. Well, get this book. It's very short. It's very easy to understand, and the example he gave is very clear. So, get this book. Learn more about yourself. God bless you. All right, thank you guys for watching. I'm Ethan, and this is Oscar. Oscar who? Oscar Nellis. All right, I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> thank you.